For more on this, on where we are headed with the U.S. economy, we're joined by a good friend, Nicholas Economides. He's the professor of economics at the Stern Business School at NYU in New York. Uh, good, good to see you again. Where are we now with this economy? We kind of are in this kind of wait and see, I guess, what the data says, right? Well, first of all, uh, unfortunately, we have uh, consistent, persistent inflation. And that creates inflation expectations, both uh, by businesses and consumers. And uh, right now, practically everybody expects inflation to stay at least as high. That's a real problem for the uh, U.S. Uh, economy. At the same time, the Fed is going to most likely increase by three quarters. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what, what exactly ha happens there. But what we are missing and in terms of policy adjustments, is what we're missing is a fiscal reduction. We, we don't see the federal government ready to say that it will spend less. And that's what we need to bring inflation down. Gas prices have come down. I mean, that's got to be yes. good news, right, if you're worried about inflation. I mean, gas, transportation, all the things related to it. Absolutely is good. Uh, but I'm, one cannot be sure that they will stay low, because to a large extent, it dep they depend on the war between Russia and Ukraine. And, um, you know, it's very unpredictable. The, the war is very unpredictable. And the attitude of uh, the Russian government towards Western Europe on issues of energy is also unpredictable. So we don't know, really. Uh, and I think that market, the, the energy market, is way too volatile and not the most important one in uh, the, the inflation uh, issues. Um, that's where we are. Unfortunately, we're in a world with a huge amount of uncertainty. And um, there doesn't be, there doesn't, one cannot make a positive prediction that uncertainty is going to be reduced in the near future. Right. But we do want to talk about solutions. And look, I, I, I'm the first to be critical of what the U.S. government did when it came to the pandemic. When the pandemic first hit, we were worried that because people weren't going out anymore, there, there was not enough demand, too much supply. So what did we do? We gave away a bunch of money, right? Massive cuts in rates. We gave away a bunch of money. And then now, there's too much spending, there's too much buying, and now we're trying to take away sort of that, that fun bowl. I, I just think uh, that, that, are we expecting sorry, the Fed to do too much here? I think that there are two things here. One of them is that the Biden administration gave too much money at the end of the pandemic, and that's kind of the major mistake that, that created the inflation to start with. Then the inflation was enhanced by, by the war. Uh, but um, in terms of the Fed, I believe that if there are signs that we are in a recession, the Fed is going to stop increasing interest rates. I think it's unreasonable to think that the Fed will keep increasing interest rates if there are very strong signs that we are in a recession or about to get into a recession. So I don't worry about that so much. They are, they're going to, to adjust. Uh, I do worry, though, for the, that the other part of the government that is the, the executive part of the government and Congress, are not trying to limit spending. And that's an issue. I mean, because no matter what the Fed does, uh, if the federal government keeps spending more and more and proposing to spend more and more, it feeds inflationary right, expectations. Let, let, let's be 100% honest here. I know you're 100% right on this, and I think our viewers generally would agree with you. But to expect Congress and the executive office to, to cut back on spending or reduce spending, that's not a realistic expectation. So if that's the case, where are we going to next? Well, um, I don't know why it's not realistic. I mean, are these guys are totally irrational? I mean, are, aren't we all in the same boat? I think it, 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 they should take it seriously. But if they don't, let's try to, to, to go in that direction. Suppose that they don't, and uh, we they keep spending more and more, and we are relying on the Fed. Most likely, this will mean that the Fed is going to make higher increases in interest rates. And there is, unfortunately, a bigger chance of uh, a recession and a bigger chance of a longer recession. We might be going to the, in that path. I hope not, but we might be going in that path. Now, I, I'm going to, we have a little bit of time left, so I want to think, uh, think positively here. Some say, some experts say that we could have a small recession or a light recession 
and everybody will be happy again and things will be okay. Do you think, what's the likelihood of that being possible? Difficult to predict. I, I think it's unlikely, but it's difficult to predict. Even if we have a light recession, I am more concerned that inflation is going to persist. And inflation is going to persist throughout the recession and after the recession. That's my m more worrisome uh, issue in such a scenario. Um, again, my, in my point of view, from my point of view, the recession is not the biggest problem. The, the biggest problem that we face is, in fact, uh, inflation. And we also face the war and the consequence of the war. So I would like the, the present administration, the Biden administration, to take bold steps to try to end that war, uh, to try to make a deal with the Russians so that the war actually ends.